Hello everyone, we're back on 3D Print Lab. Today we'll be printing a game model. We'll be printing the Revenant. First off is location. Revenant is a bomber, T3 bomber from Supreme Commander. Let's do the extraction. We're going to go to Forged Alliance Forever and find the ID on the website. And go ahead and extract that out of the archives. And then we're gonna bring it into Blender using the SCM import script. Then we're gonna save it out as the OBJ in order to bring it into 3ds Max. And now phase three is coordination. So we're gonna bring it into 3ds Max, and first thing we're gonna do is rotate it so it's standing up. And we're going to make it the full size of the build areas. We're going to print it as big as possible. This will be, well, the last episode of the handgun was pretty big, but this this is actually uh, utilizing the full capacity of my machine. So we're going to bring it back into 3ds Max. First thing we're going to do is fix all these planes that are everywhere. There's a couple planes. Maybe issues. And these little missile things. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with them yet. We're going to see if they print. If they don't, then we're going to have to get rid of them. Let's bring it into mesh serve. And once we bring it into mesh mixer, we're going to just start adding support. And we really, I've been using mesh mixer more and more, and it's like, it does work, but there there is instances where it doesn't. And you can kind of circumvent this by holding, you see their controller shift, it'll force a support. But still, sometimes it can be hard to remove, sometimes it gets stuck in the geometry of everything else. It just becomes a pain. So, obelisk support is definitely not obsolete, it's definitely to be able to use it in conjunction with everything else it has not been totally placed by mesh mixer. So just gonna make sure that we get everything supported. And here we go. Gonna make sure we have everything supported. There is a few small features. I don't know if they're going to print. Definitely want to make sure that all the support is interconnected so that when we go to print, it will keep from shearing off the build plate under its own weight, which can actually can be an issue for big parts. If there's not enough support at all, it'll break and it'll fall and it'll be printing. Some of it will be in midair. And mesh mixer just crashed on me. So we're actually gonna go back and we're gonna do some obelisk support we're gonna start out with. And make sure to support everything with that. And this file is rather difficult to deal with because of what everything is. There's tons of planes everywhere. These are planes you have to extrude them out in order to Get them to print. You have to extrude all these. These are just planes. You have to have some kind of thickness in order to print. Even though I think in the end, when we did end up printing it, there are some planes that actually printed out. I don't know how they did it, but I guess they were big enough, thick enough in order to print. Bring it back into Makerware. And then we're back into. Mesh Mixer. We tried automatic support. That's just going to make a total mess. So we're back making obelisk support once again. All manual, all painstaking that it is, but it will result in the highest quality print. And really, that's what we're after. I think with this print, that's what we're after. We're after the highest quality print. Now, some of them, I just kind of want to slam them and just get them done. But with this one, we're definitely going to try to see you know, what's the quality we can get with this huge model. 
I also going to need to try to repair the geometry because there is an issue with the geometry. Uh, Hush Mixer does have a repair function. I think it could shrink wrap the model for the geometry to be fixed. And I'm just going to add some wrap to these. Add some wrap to the middle part. And just make sure it's all supported. I'm going to copy it over. Now we're going to boolean everything together. I'm going to copy it over and array it so it's support on the other side. Okay, remember that when you're building things that are symmetrical, your support is also symmetrical. It saves time. And we're going to export it back into MakerWare. Actually, we're going to go to Mesh Mixer now. And we're going to add even more support, and it crashed again. Mesh Mixer is not very stable. One wrong click, and everything's gone. Even if you try to save as a dot mix, it will won't sa it won't save the status of the support rods. So you'll have to go back and do everything again. So really, Mesh Mixer not only doesn't work half the time, if it crashes, you lose everything. So in the end, Obelisk support is probably better. Ultimately. Anyway, so we're getting this all supported. And one mistake I made with this is that I used 3mm support. Figured out that 3mm, 1mm supports in Mesh Mixer don't work at all. 3mm is too thick, you can't break them up. 1mm is too thin, they don't print. Or rather, anything that tries to print on top of them doesn't support. Base force conversion, you bring it into MakerWare. I can slice it off here. And here it is, sliced. Cliff layers here. It does look all right. Looks like a little print. Uh, print layer to layer, going up. Okay, I'm going to extract that now. Phase 5 is production. Iteration 1. This print took 2 hours and 55 minutes. Consumed 37 grams of PLA. It did alright until it got to the middle top portion here. It started printing that fell over, it actually printed on top. I don't exactly know how it recovered from that, but it did. So, moving on to iteration two, we're going to totally remove those little missile things. Uh, those will never print in a thousand years, they're just useless. We're going to remove the support for those as well. And we're going to optimize the support a bit. So it's just barely touching. I'll be able to come off real easy. And I'm going to blend it all together. Mirror it over. I'm going to get the mesh mixer. And I'm going to try to support it once again. Now, I, you know, I, I like Mesh Mixer, I like Mesh Mixer, but for certain things, I don't think it will end up working out. Well. It just doesn't... Hmm. Definitely mixing Mesh Mixer with all this is uh, interesting. See, now I'm trying to use some uh, one millimeter of support. Well, your support ended up not really supporting much of anything. As you see in the time lapse, the go through and they were. The support rods are alright. I've been told that you can taper them to 0.15, but I haven't 
experiment with that. I'm only doing tapers to point by. And sometimes it's really hard to get a support rod to generate. I think even, even if I do do one with mostly obelisk of support, we're still going to need some mesh mixer somewhere. Ah, oh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll try one with all obelisk. It's not in this video. I'm definitely going to try it. Try the testing. Which is uh, a new phenomenon for me. I usually do everything in print lab. But I do need to move on. This video has already taken an entire day. I'm supposed to be producing two, three videos a day. But I will take the time to make sure that what I print is right. So you can see here that the old model had this weird, or actually this model, yeah, it had this weird gap here when you print anything. And that's why it fell over in the first print. So I'm just going to extrude it out a little bit. I'm also going to move up the edges of that mid middle part. So that's also nice and easy. Now we slice it off and it looks like it's going to print. So here we go with the print now. And you can see that those two little engines start popping up and they start to fall over because that one millimeter support isn't adequate. So once again we're going to be putting support on. We're going to go with two millimeter support rods this time. It'll work better. Mm. Yeah, this is just it's an interesting model. It is very challenging. It's not the most challenging model I've ever seen. It's a Salem. Salem, Serpent Salem class is definitely the most challenging. Once again, it should print fine. This took 2 hours and 55 minutes once again. 37 grams of PLA. This one actually did come out alright. Everything printed. Support was... Some of, the, some of the support was easy to remove. Some of the support was impossible to remove. That center piece on the top there, it did print. But I did need to put uh, hit it with some super glue in order for it to... Totally bust apart while I was trying to derig it. So the obelisk support just comes right off, no real issue there. But some of this mesh mixer support is a different story. I don't think we've seen the end of obelisk support yet. I was trying, I was almost ready to just completely obsolete it, but that's just not the case. It doesn't work really well. This mixer, mesh mixer support has too many little caveats about. Not only placing it, but integrating it later on. Using our uh, tweezers and our nail clippers to. Is that, those are dedicated 3D printed nail clippers, so not used for anything else. And all along down here. Here's the bottom of it. Here's the bottom of the first one. Here's the bottom of a whaler, cyber whaler I built a while ago. If you try to print things flat and you don't try to print it vertically, I did with this one, the bottom surface of the other. Here's the final base. There's two of them sitting next to each other. And there's two of them on top of each other. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been the Red Moon. Copyright Gas Power Games. From the Screen Van Universe. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, leave a like, comment, just whatever's comfortable. And if you haven't seen it yet, I invite you to go watch the introduction. Last episode was the Colt 1911. There's a cyber turret, and there's a GDI refinery, also worth watching. Check it out.